It is Tuesday, June 2nd. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Mass protests against police brutality continued across the country on Monday night as Donald Trump ordered state governors to, quote, dominate protesters and seek retribution, threatening to invoke the Insurrection Act and tear gas peaceful protesters so he could do a photo op. Meanwhile, a private autopsy confirms what everyone who's seen the traumatic video of George Floyd's death could tell. Asphyxiation was at least part of the reason he died. And in New York State, lawmakers are already moving to repeal a law that shields police disciplinary records from the public. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. The gloves are off and Donald Trump is out for blood. In a call with state governors yesterday, Trump was unhinged, raving that protesters were, quote, going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks, end quote. He followed with, someone throwing a rock is like shooting a gun. You have to do retribution. You have to arrest people and you have to try people and they have to go to jail for long periods of time, end quote. Bear in mind, this is coming from a guy who is deeply, deeply scared. Earlier on Monday, Trump tear-gassed a group of peaceful protesters near the White House so he could walk to St. James Cathedral and hold a Bible in the air. Literally. That's all he did. Wandered over. Held up a Bible. At one of his deranged press conferences later Monday, Trump threatened to invoke the Insurrection Act, which would allow him to deploy active-duty military troops to inflict further violence on protesters. That hasn't happened since the 1992 Rodney King riots in L.A. Even mayors and governors in the blue states are cracking down in support of the police. L.A. moved up its curfew to the absurd hour of 1 p.m. on Monday, and New York City instituted a 11 p.m. curfew despite plans for mass demonstrations yesterday. Private autopsy ordered by the family of George Floyd indicates what all of us pretty much knew already. He suffocated to death at the hands of police. Dr. Alicia M. Wilson of the University of Michigan and Dr. Michael Baden, former New York City medical examiner, found that Floyd died both from the knee on the neck and the other officers compressing his lungs as they held him down. A lawyer for the family said, quote, Not only was the knee on George's neck a cause of his death, but so was the weight of the other two police officers on his back, who not only prevented blood flow into his brain, but also airflow into his lungs. End quote. This appears to fit with recently uncovered security footage that shows other angles of the arrest. The New York Times published a video investigation of the event, and that one image shows another officer, obscured from sight in the main video, also pressing on Floyd's back while Devitt Chauvin held him down. So far, Chauvin is the only one who's been arrested, although the three other officers clearly contributed to his murder. And even their chief isn't denying it. In an interview on CNN on Sunday, Minneapolis Police Department Chief Madeira Arando said that Floyd might not have died if the other officers had intervened. They didn't. And now the country has hit a tipping point. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Progress on police brutality has been slow to say the least, but on the recent round of protests appear to be moving the needle ever so slightly, or at least acknowledging that there is a needle, we'll take what we can get. And New York lawmakers are reportedly flirting with the idea of getting rid of a longstanding state law called 50A, which shields police personnel records from public view. It's absurd that these anti-transparency measures are even on the books in the first place. So getting them out of here would be a huge step for some semblance of justice and good precedent for other states. The other bright point is in Kentucky, where the Louisville police chief has been summarily ejected for his enabling of a reckless and violent department, particularly in the case of a shop owner killed by police early on Monday morning. Chief Steve Conrad probably will never face charges, but it's good to see a head rolling at the highest level. Two of his officers shot a business owner in the wee hours of Monday morning, did not have their body cameras on. A serious breach of policy. 
Killers have been placed on administrative leave, so we can only hope they face some actual consequences as well. We'll either look back on these steps as the first inklings that things were getting better, or as a false hope of progress in an increasingly authoritarian state. Time will tell. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. A new watchdog report found that the IRS has neglected to audit large portion of rich people who haven't filed tax returns, which means the government is missing out on billions of dollars in revenue. In other words, the government can't even bring itself to enforce the pitiful amount of taxes it's supposed to collect from the rich. Good job. Facebook employees organized a virtual walkout on Monday, taking the day off from work to protest Mark Zuckerberg's complete inaction on moderating Donald Trump's violent posts. It's the first walkout in Facebook's history. A white nationalist group got caught posing as Antifa on Twitter. According to NBC News, the white nationalist group Identity Europa posed as a national Antifa group in order to incite violence. This is an old tactic and one that usually fails almost immediately, and this time was no different. Federal judge denied a right-wing group's request to block the use of absentee mail-in ballots in Virginia, handing a major victory to voting rights groups. The law holds against future challenges. It'll mean that anyone in Virginia can use an absentee ballot without needing an excuse, effectively legalizing vote by mail. Quicker, quickie. That's it for the show today. Join us live at noon on the Majority Report. We'll be taking calls and doing stories today. Stay safe.